news. And now for our weekly news segment. What do we got? All right. Yeah, we get we get a we get a bit this week. Some some stragglers from the the CCS stuff. Let me go ahead and share my screen. I, can find right I think we have here. a little bit of a lag with you. I'm not sure. Oh, with me? Uh, no, actually, no. I think it's good now. Okay. Okay. There's the screen. All right. So, Fluffy Pony has resigned from the core team. Uh, he uh, opened yep. an issue on the meta page about a day after suggesting uh, disbanding the core team altogether. The next day, he posted this saying that he would resign from the core team uh, just for like just because of what happened. And also, he, I guess he hasn't been he hasn't been doing that much handling with it. So he's stepping he's stepping down. And, officially stepping down. Yeah, officially stepping down. And Our there was a CEO. The Monero, the Monero CEO, yeah. Uh, and there were there were some talks in the Monero community channel on Matrix earlier. They had a had a meeting. Um, there were some potential people who would help to take over the uh, managing the CCS wallet funds, uh, but I don't think they're quite sure yet. So yeah, there's some there's some changes that are going to happen, hopefully for the better, uh, because the whole CCS thing is just an absolute opsec disaster and. The people who were in charge of that uh, should have should have known better. I'll just put it that way. Um, yeah, it's just a, that was just a bad luck, right? For well, there was there was for those in charge of the CCS wallet to to get hacked. Um, it's it's just a hard pill to swallow. It's like I mean, yeah, out, bad, bad, bad luck, but also how, how can I figure out not to lose them? Right. Yeah. It sucks and it's unfortunate, but also the setup was like pretty irresponsible from what I can see with that amount of money being handled. But regardless, uh, some changes are happening. So, uh, yeah, Fluffy say, Pony is uh, stepped down. Fluffy Pony stepped down because of the CCS incident because I remember from 2018 or something, he already mentioned in the that uh, he was basically in practice stepping down from court. Right. I mean, the only thing he that really is now has official been, yeah. is now probably just him like releasing the keys that right. he has or right. something. Right. But he hasn't been active for at least three years. Right. Or so. I guess what people were criticizing though is then why didn't they remove, <laughs> uh, you know, move it to a new wallet, at least for the CCS, a new wallet that it, he didn't have. Um, that's the, oh, that's the jersey, the Libertad jersey. That's yes, nice. yes. Nice. that's awesome. Wow, I Very ordered nice. one. I have one. Very nice. What what size is that? That's the goalkeeper version. What size is that? ML. Oh, XL. Okay, so that's not too bad, then, because you got me an XXL. I was like, oh my god, it's gonna be a, like a nightgown on me. Um, yeah, and we had I had Justin Ernhofer and Francisco Cabana on Monero Talk this week. We, we Monero Talk broke is very it all good. Down. We yeah, we spoke about. Did you listen to it, Tux? You gave it a listen. Yeah, oh yeah, I listened to most of it. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. There, There's a lot of a lot of info dropped there. We, we spoke about the hack itself, uh, and then we spoke uh, we spoke about you know steps moving forward. What what Monero and the Monero community can learn from this and how we could all move forward. I thought, I thought it was a great conversation. And then we talked about uh, Justin and his new company, the, the new Mr. Cypher Trace. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and Trace. And of course, there's maybe a lot of people. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Stand next maybe, to maybe old, Justin old could be a sponsor Trace. at Monerotopia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, Which, uh, he did a yeah. very good report and a lot of people are freaking out like oh how can he how can he do this trade it's like some of that a little bit of that was privileged information the txids were already yeah. given in the report it's basically like wait i can i can track my own transactions yes yes right i i mean we tried to i tried to get that point across in the podcast i don't know if you were listening to the whole thing i had asked justin numerous yeah. times to clarify that uh and then um francisco clarified it as well so it's just people going clear. hog wild with uh, not quite understanding the. Re- but they didn't yeah. look at the report. They don't understand it. They're like, ah, they're tracking Monero. Eh, it's a bit more nuanced than that. Uh, and Monero right. isn't perfect. Like if you make, it, in this case especially, when you have the initial transaction IDs and there's some weird anomalies that you can see, like 
like pocket change, what looked like it may have been used, or like the swept function may have been used. You can see that pretty clearly, but it looks like the money may be, it's, I mean, this is like, this happened like a month ago, right? So the money's probably yeah. like, they're probably not going to be able to find out ultimately where it went. Ever. The the funniest part of the interview is when I, I asked Justin and Francisco, well, what should the hacker have done? And they wouldn't they wouldn't tell me. I was like, well, isn't it just as simple as they should have just sent one one transaction out of the wallet, right? I mean, I don't know. I'm not the tech guy. We are guy, not going to teach but... you how to rob us more effectively. Yes. I don't know, Body. Maybe you have some. Is Body still on here? Uh, but maybe you have some commentary on, on on that. No, I don't, man. We've like we said it all. Like it's it's just a no, terrible like, situation. Uh, the, the behavior of the, the behavior of the hacker to to sweep the transactions out in nine separate transactions and then to after that use what appeared to be um what is it called pocket change. pocket change to to send his transactions out uh it all seemed like bizarre behavior for somebody that's trying to hide their tracks yeah well, you would think that so, someone so smart, smart enough to hack that important. would have would have done the basic amount of research to to understand that you know, they're a high threat model actor. And so they need to be a little bit more careful with their outputs and the way they manage all that. But uh, I mean, you never know. The setup was so bad. Maybe it was just a script kitty that somehow got in there. Right. right. Yeah. They didn't even know what they came across. They're like, what's this Monero? What's that? <laughs> right. Oh, oh my yeah, God. I heard of that. If it's related somehow with the, what's the last pass? The hack? Uh, the yeah, there were. Yeah, there were some oh, yeah, there were the some theories there. Yeah, some theories, yeah. some theories uh, are regarding yeah. that. Um, it would be very lazy from the part of, of people like taking care of, of all fans to put C's in there. But it would make sense in the in the in the sense that Convenience. if somebody just found out like a bunch of right. C's, from right. a bunch of stuff, right? I said, like, well, it's just another one. Right. You know? What do I have to do? I have to learn Monero in just one hour to to clean this wallet. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, does anyone know if the Windows Hot Wallet was was also drained? Because on on Reddit, someone replied to me a couple days ago, and they said it was only the Ubuntu, the cold storage, that was drained, but not the Windows Hot Wallet. Yes, that's what Luigi said on the CCS Wallet incident thread. Um, it was just the just the Ubuntu one, and not the Window Windows one, which is interesting so because. They were both on the same network, um, but maybe the Ubuntu one was more of a, a target because it was more likely to have both ones. I don't know. It's it's really weird. It's there's like nothing really to be made of it. And since it happened two months ago, there's probably going to be little memory forensics that can be done. Um, like they're gonna there's some people that were working with him to try and get logs and dump dump the system, right? Make a snapshot, all this stuff, but it happened like two months ago and it's the money is long gone, right? There's, there's probably, there's probably not going to be yep. any way to, uh, to find out where it went because even with those few transactions that the, you know, Justin was able to trace after that, it, it's probably, I can't, I can't say for sure. You can say more on this, but it was, it was weird that Luigi seemed like kind of unwilling, very reticent to put, to make any logs, to do any forensics, to do anything like that. Supposedly he reported it like within 24 hours of noticing that it was gone, but, like, why didn't any of the core team that he reported it to, th did they recommend doing those kinds of forensics? And then why wouldn't he have done that? Yeah, this really should have been talked about like two months ago when it was initially reported, not now right. that it's public and all of this. It's it's just kind of a disastrous and sketchy situation. So hopefully they'll have yeah. a new person because like, I don't know. I don't really know Luigi. I know he's been like a long time person that's done merge. uh accepted merge request for the Monero project and as from what I understand he he he's smart and he understands a lot of how uh, a lot of the a lot of the code that he uh, accepts merges for but like the way the money was handled was very bad so he probably should never handle other people's money ever again mm -hmm. yeah I would so, say I would say silver lining is is really threefold I mean one one people might wake up to the fact that you gotta you know properly handle your your private key your seed right stored and, and you know learn lessons learned here on, on how not to do things number two um core becoming either being eradicated or some becoming more decentralized with these work groups that they're talking about and just overall the yep, project yep. the management of the project and development becoming more decentralized and three i'd say just 
further uh, focus on the fact that Monero does need to improve in some aspects with regards to its ring signatures, which we all knew already. But here's yet just like another real world example. Granted, you know, uh, it wasn't like Monero was traced from some outside observer. Uh, transaction IDs were given up and you're able to gain some insight. But still, uh, we, we, we don't even want that to be able to happen. Right. And so things like full membership proofs now perhaps has even more political will to be implemented among the community than, than ever before. I, and that's the way that's my positive yeah, take. Yeah, on totally. this yeah, eventually it'll you know, very the won't even <laughs> <do that. laughs> they won't even compare. It's being a price agent. I'm only concerned about if those half million got dumped onto an exchange and it hurt my bags. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh next we have I all arc scam. I don't know how true this is because I I didn't really get to look at the news before I link them up but apparently this guy decided to buy a 25 dollars eu debit card a few hours after payment he received an email and guess what it's not eu card it's a usa card anyway but i still use it i tried to pay 25 20 10 invoices all failed because of insufficient funds when i tried to spend one usd at work but didn't work for 10 15 20 so i received one worth of paypal card of 25 guy replied me in the the support it's a merchant's fault but it's not um I don't know what to say about this. This was just what was uh, Tony gave in the news. Um, I've used Allark before um, and multiple times, and he is very responsive and he is very helpful. So personally, I've had a good experience with Allark. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really check out that story. Uh, next, this general manager urges central banks to lead innovation for CBDCs. Central banks have responsibility to keep pace with digital age and innovation. General manager for the Bank of International Settlements believes it's opening marks at a conference in Switzerland on November 8th. Carson's called CBDCs the central element of this leadership, elaborating on the potential threats and changes. So just more, uh, just more CBDC stuff, really. Um, yeah, yeah. Pretty standard. We get yeah, at least something moving. about that every week. Um, and here's yep. one that you gave, Doug. Uh, this was this was pretty uh, interesting. I, I saw this earlier this yeah. week. Authorities have arrested Hakan Ayik, probably pronounced that incorrectly, uh, a top tier drug trafficker turned encryption king. He was the guy who told cartels what encrypted phone to use. I spoke to multiple associates of his. They thought he was untouchable. Talks, what was the I, think, of the um, I think you or I or any one of the Monero bros that are like, somewhat savvy on security could probably get hired for millions of dollars a year to help these cartels with their security because <laughs> apparently they don't know what the fuck they're yeah. doing <laughs> uh, yeah apparently apparently right like it, it's not just a couple you know just, just google it guys <laughs> i mean jesus christ oh, of ask chat like gpt like what what is this uh phone that they were recommending to people that's which what ended i'm up trying being, to see i'm gonna see if i can open this called like anon, it was called like anon phone or something and oh yeah that up, was a uh, fed honeypot one for sure for right sure. it's a fed honeypot like whoops whoopsie oh, uh but awesome it, interesting story for those that are interested you know in opsec and trying to remain anonymous uh is looking to see how these guys were attempting to do it and Learning, learning from their mistakes. Not that you're a criminal or you're looking to do illegal things, uh, oh, but those that are. Anna, a phone in the underworld yeah. with a ton of interesting features. Only later the FBI revealed it was secretly running Anom. Uh, I'm not aware of the Anom phone. I'm, I think Anom. There was there was a couple phones that had like Anon in the name that ended up being like controlled by the uh, the feds at some point with their. Mm -hmm crappy security chat networks it's just a bunch of garbage interesting interesting sorry a tweet from at samurai dev running our btc to xmr swaps over mainnet now very nice very nice very exciting very like exciting. what what is that like so what so this There's is just like uh right? no I, I get that uh so they're running our btc on the main net so that means like they're, they're like they're really close to it is it usable now you could do a btc to xmr atomic swap through samurai 
Yeah, it looks like they have an internal beta build, but he said over the main net, so that means they're actually doing it uh, in the real world and not just on the stage or the test net. So, I think it's that's, specifically that's... for Doxic change. So something about the Samurai Whirlpool, you get some sort of change output that's still like taggable to you, and they're using the the atomic swap feature to handle that Doxic change. I don't know if like you could use it hypothetically for more. Like, could you use their interface for doing like your entire balance? Uh, I don't know, but at a minimum, it's at least for that toxic change reason. Oh, I see. I see. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's the use case. Well, baby steps, right? I mean, at some point, they'll. I don't see why it doesn't just lead to them implementing full-on BTC Dexamar atomic swaps if they've gone this far. But I guess. Yeah, I mean, the more liquidity so from all places that we get it, the better. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Very true. Very true. And I all think right, that is that's, that's all. Yeah, that's all I I had this week. Not too much. All right. 